February 7th, G&T Sports Talk. we got some basketball news. Trade deadline passed, and a lot of trades happened, and a lot of crazy things have happened. For I am Bobby Thompson. I'm Julian Delarty, and yeah, brother, let me just tell you, the trade deadline was very, very, very prominent with my New York Knicks. This was a huge deal. We started the trade deadline off with a frenzy. We sent Christoph Porzingis packing, and now you see I've scrapped that bum's jersey. He is a snake. <laughs> he crossed us. He wanted out the whole time. That's how this went down. This was not the Knicks moving him because they wanted to move him. This was him requesting out, and they didn't want this problem festering. His brother has been a pain in the butt for the Knicks, for lack of a better term. I won't go too crazy with this, but he's been a pain in the butt for the Knicks. For ever since we drafted Brzingis, he's been saying the Knicks gotta do this, they gotta do that for him, they gotta keep him happy. You know what, dude? Shut up. <laughs> Enough of you. Don't deal with your, don't deal with your um, mediocrity in Dallas. Coming Have from, fun. Sorry. No, 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 no. I was gonna say it's coming from uh, somebody who knows nothing about the game of basketball and how to run a team. I mean, like. Oh, Jan- yeah, Janice. Yeah, that's the clown. Janice Brzingis. He is a clown. <laughs> he is. A- he's acts as his brother's agent, but he doesn't realize how much harm he's doing to him. And Kristoff doesn't realize how toxic that relationship <clears throat> is becoming. I agree. He's letting him control it too much, but. Honestly, Kristoff has some diva in him too. He's not he's not free of fall here. He hasn't been happy either. He skipped the exit meeting with Phil Jackson. That's when all this stuff kind of started to happen. You started to see the disconnect with the Knicks and Porzingis, and it's just been continuing since then. He's had four head coaches since he's been drafted. Obviously, the team looks horrible without him out there. I'm not sure what he really expected this to look like without him. I'm not sure what he thought was really going to happen, but... He just wasn't happy with the whole Ennis Cantor situation, who, thank God, finally got bought out. So I don't need to speak about him again after today. Just ridiculous how that all went with him kissing the logo, making a mockery of the organization. Really embarrassing stuff. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a Knicks. That's what we are. We're a laughing stock. Have won one playoff series since 2000, and it's embarrassing. We're, one of the, we're probably, I saw a stat one time that we, us and the Timberwolves, have been the worst two teams since the early 2000s. I think the lowest winning percentage is by the Knicks and the T Wolves in the past almost 20 years. It's, so you have a good, you have a large sample size of incompetency there, yeah. and it all begins with James Dolan. Yeah, you know, uh, James Dolan really, um, in my opinion, <clears throat> I feel ever since he bought the Knicks, he he's done more damage than good. Yeah. You know, there's some I'll there's some that. owners in sports that when they pick up a when they buy a franchise or they inherit it through their parent, their fathers or usually or their mother, something like that. That's what happened in this situation. The father had owned the Knicks. So he inherited the Knicks and he also he also owns the Rangers, right? I yes, believe. he owns the Rangers so, as well. He actually let go of the Liberty. He used to own them and now it's just Knicks and Rangers. Okay. Um, what he's done is, I think he's one of the worst owners in sports. I don't think mm-hmm. he knows a cl- has a clue of what he's doing. Not at all. Listen, <laughs> listen. He when you can't make a team a winner in like twenty and years tw- time, there's the problem. And you know, we all know what the Knicks. Listen, the Knicks fan base is worldwide. You know, mm-hmm. I I feel like anywhere you go, you could go from um. Literally, the the slums of Los Angeles to the <laughs> slums of New York, and you will see somebody with a Nick jersey. Even but, overseas, you'll see it. Yeah, the, overseas. game's growing overseas, though. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure the Knicks have a nice fan base overseas. Abso- absolutely, and it's really um, it's it's disappointing. Now, for me, quite frankly, I'm not a Knicks fan by any <laughs> means. But listen, I've seen. I've seen garbage basketball with the <laughs> with the Nets. They're finally starting to pick it up a yeah, little bit. Yeah, you guys are looking a lot better. However, I feel I feel for you, man. You know, the Knicks are are a clown show, a laughing yeah, stock. They can't get it right. They can't get free agents to come over there. Why? Right. Because they're not winners. Right. Now, you know, maybe this off season this could something could change, you know. Yes. With with all the cat the the money with trading Przingis, which I think was one of the biggest mistakes that they will make. But however, they can make up with it with getting two max deals. Yeah, and if they can lure 
Kevin Durant, which uh, which we'll, uh, really really which we'll talk true. about a little bit later. Yeah, we'll get to KD, of course. Uh, and they could lure in somebody if they could somehow get Kyrie or something like mm-hmm. that because you keep mm-hmm. hearing chirps around Music the league. Music to my ears right now. So it's so, you know things are starting to look up in New York. This is a step in the right direction, and in my opinion, the second thing they need to do is have James Dolan. Uh, sell the team to somebody who knows what the hell he's doing. <laughs> yeah, that would be great for all Knicks fans. I would love that. And actually, <laughs> while we're speaking of that and someone selling the team, the Knicks are the most valuable franchise in the NBA. Yes, that figure came out that. yesterday. Yeah. And despite our losing culture, we are still somehow the most profitable franchise in the NBA, even more than the Lakers. Mm. I believe we're around $4 billion. I think we're second yeah. overall, I want to say. Somewhere around there. I was looking at the figures. But yeah, the Knicks are making a lot of money, which is part of the issue because the fans still go to watch this horrible basketball. Their garden sells out every night. Even in, even while we're tanking, it sounds like a playoff game. It's crazy how devoted the Knicks fans are. It Absol- really is. Absolutely. And, you, and listen, Madison Square Garden is, is the world's most famous arena. Yeah. You go there, you watch a, a Ranger game, a Knicks game. Uh, I've been to Madison Square Garden many times. I'm a huge WWE fan, and right. I've seen it there. It, there's nothing like going to Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I enjoy going there, too. It's like <clears throat> you feel different when you're in that building. Yeah. It's a really historic building. They renovated it. It's a nice st- nice arena. When the Knicks are playing well, it's a great atmosphere. Even when they're not playing well, like I just said before, the fans are always engaged. It's great. I just want the winner on the floor so the fans can finally get what they deserve for the past 20 years. Yeah, and look... Look, Knicks have dealt with with all this scrutiny and all that. You know, they had Carmelo. I remember a few years yeah, ago. Carmelo, right here. Twenty thirteen, <laughs> when they had Jeremy Lin, Lin Jeremy Sandy. Lin, yes. Um, I liked him a lot. You know, it's it's um nothing really worked out. It doesn't. Yes. You make a great point. Nothing is sustained. Like they'll have, there'll be flashes in the pan. Like you'll see, like a couple good seasons here and there. Like when we won the fifty games, we made the second rounds of the playoffs. Should have arguably made the Easter Conference Finals, in my opinion. We blew it to Indiana. We were the higher seed when we lost in six games, unfortunately. And that's the last time we've been in the playoffs. That was six years ago now, and it's been a tough six years for Knicks fans. It it, it really has, and you know. I think that after this year, you know, it will be a step in the right direction. I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sold on your head coach, in my opinion. That my dad says the same thing, actually. Fizz, I, I'm not really sold on him. I don't think he really. He's, uh, he's not your he's guy. Not a, he's not a good fit for New York basketball, hmm. in my opinion. And he see you know look at what he's doing now i know he has he's had to deal with a clown show yeah yeah that's but, playing a mile you know maybe it. he could prove me wrong you know maybe he gets two top free agents coming in and he could change his yeah. team into a winner so yeah. we'll see what happens you know it's very hard to judge the job he's doing honestly i understand the skepticism that you guys have about Fizdale and certain others do i guess you guys figure he's not fiery enough maybe maybe he's not like Enough, um, in, I don't know how you how to put this, but maybe you think he doesn't have that it factor in New York. That's the best way I can put it, I guess. Yeah. But it's high. he does still, he still gets into the game. He's engaged with the players. He's all about development in the culture, he keeps saying. And he argues calls still, like, even though we're tanking. So it's good to see that he still cares about the results of the game. Yeah. Like, he's not actively trying to lose games. It's just that the team is so bad, that's what happens. The only way you could say we kind of were trying to tank with sitting cancer, but that's an argument too because he's not as good as you would think. I'll get to him later, but I kind of want to break down this trade now with Porzingis okay. and the Mavericks. I we'll think see. that's where we should start since we're going heavy with the Knicks right now. So when we first traded, for this was a crazy sequence of events for me, how all this went down. I, I was in a whirlwind. Okay. You can even ask Bobby last week. I was pretty frantic when all this was happening. So this happened, I want to say, a week ago now. I believe it was Thursday. And so I wake up around 12-ish. I get an alert to my phone. I present gets had a meeting with the Knicks. I'm like, okay, um, there's nothing too crazy. Um, it's just, he's probably just trying to talk about the rehab, see like when he might be back out there or whatever. I'm thinking normal. Then I see he's unhappy, and he expresses that he wants out. And I'm like, oh boy, this is really escalating quickly. Then in the next thing I see, the Knicks are going to accommodate his request and he's going to be out by the trade deadline. At this point, I'm like, whoa, how did this all happen overnight? But 
like I said before, it wasn't really overnight. That's the thing about this. It was all building behind the scenes. They did a much better job than the Lakers did of letting stuff leak, which I'm very happy about because I didn't want... This happened how it had to, honestly, when you break it down because... Porzingis had to go. We didn't want to keep. We couldn't keep him if he was unhappy because he was a restricted free agent. Honestly, we could have matched, but he would have been disgruntled. It wouldn't have been a great situation. And the thing was that if you let it leak, they could have been like, oh, no, no, I don't want to go with the Mavericks. Nope, too bad. That's where you are now. We don't need to cater to you. We need to make the best deal for ourselves. I don't care about how happy you are because, honestly, you screwed us. Yeah. So I don't care at all. I'm happy that this happened. Now that I have more time to think about it, at first I was upset, but now I'm on board with it. I'm on board with the plan. Open up the two max cap spaces and try to go get those free agents. I mean, you got to try. Eventually, they got to come. Someone's got to change the molds. I'm just waiting. I'm hoping that someone does it. We'll see. Yeah, um, this trade really was eye-opening for me as well because you're trading your best player and that's I, what it was tough in the beginning i was very upset in the beginning that's why because it, it seems like you were rebuilding like starting from scratch like another reset we've been through this i don't even know how many times and, over the past 20 years and i have the trade up right now and dallas got Posingas, they got courtney lee tim hardaway jr who's another guy you guys really liked and trey burke yeah and you guys got dennis smith jr deandre jordan my god wesley Matthews, in my opinion, the one thing that you should be very happy about is the two future firsts. Yes, that was a nice bonus. It made me feel a lot so better about this th deal. That's two players right there that can mm -hmm. really be a factor on your team. And one of those can, uh, I, I mean, those two draft picks aren't going to be Zion. But I think no, you, no, guys, no, no, you, no. Guys, <laughs> you guys this year, you could get, like I said, you know what? This could maybe be the step in the right direction. Maybe Puzingis wasn't your... Was it meant Wasn't to? that uh, yeah. guy. And yeah. you know what? You you just took two future firsts away from Dallas. Mm -hmm. And people were talking about, you know, my dad said to me today earlier bef before uh, you came a little while ago, he said the next dynasty in sports is Dallas. Hmm. And I'm going to tell you this. They haven't won, excuse my language, they haven't won shit. They, Since 2011. Yes. They did beat the big three. They... Oh, so he thought, thinks the Mavericks are going to be the next big thing in the NBA? Yeah, he thinks, he really does. He thinks Pazinga is, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now, I am not sold at all whatsoever, I'm really not. I am not into, I'm not buying into this, what <laughs> Dallas is selling. Uh, <laughs> so I, you think we won this trade ultimately? I do. I think you guys, listen, you guys are going to be a lot better, and I can't wait till you play these guys and you beat them every time you go out there, hmm. and... Look, yeah, that'll be some interesting. Look, that DeAndre ball. Jordan is serviceable. He's I like not DeAndre. He, he's not what he used to be, but he no. can make it done. This guy Wesley Matthews, am I correct me if I'm right? You still have him, or did he get no, let no, go? No, no, he got bought out. He's gonna be with the, the Pacers. Pacers. That's yeah, him. Yeah, you know, okay. yeah, you knew that. Uh, Dennis Smith. What about this guy? You he's got... staying. He's part of the long term plan. We he um we should have drafted him instead of Frank Nielakina. He would pick the pick out so, to Frank. So, you they know were what? kind of rectifying a mistake with this trade, one of them. Actually, two mistakes because we shouldn't have signed Hardaway that money and we should have drafted Dennis Smith. So you got rid of two problems with this trade. Yeah. So, you know what? In my opinion, I think you guys won this trade. I'm still, Listen, Nick fans, I understand. And Julian, you know this. You'll even agree, agree with me and talk to everybody who's a Knicks fan. Is that, you know, it's going to take time. But, you know, the... Rome wasn't built in one day. Yeah, something could trust be, the process. Something could be, yeah. <laughs> As we learned in Philly. Something could be brewing right now. Maybe they got something going on. I don't know who do, who the GM of the Knicks is. Um, with Steve Mills and Scott Perry. Okay. so They work I, together. I think that this is a good trade. You know, a lot of people are like, why would they do this? You know what? They got rid, they trimmed the fat. They trimmed somebody. They got rid of the brother that was the... the the brother who's who nitpicks at your side, you know, so he's gone. Kristoff, you know, all you guys, Nick fans, could do is just say, you know what, thanks for the memories. It was it was worthwhile. Can't wait to see you again. Yeah, it was it was an interesting. Porzingis was a roller coaster throughout his whole career with the Knicks. It was yeah. very up and down because. He starts out by getting booed because we didn't know who he was. I was thinking, why did we draft this idiot? Well, he's probably going to suck another bust. That's just typical Nick thinking when you draft an unknown player, honestly. Yeah. But so he ended up being great. And then, unfortunately, he got injured. He 
was on a but to start last season, I was thinking like, man, this guy's the franchise, he's gonna mm. be our guy, this is gonna be lead us back, we're gonna be a low tier playoff team, maybe. Right. He was averaging like thirty points in the first ten games. He mm. was going berserk. But then he cooled down, he got tired, the wear and tear, which was another issue. And I'll say this right now, I think you agree with me. What's up? Christos Porzingis cannot be a number one option on any team. He is too fragile. You can't trust him to get through the grind of a full season. He cannot be the number one scorer on a team, in my opinion. He should be second or third, in my opinion, at best. Uh, well, listen, when you guys drafted and got him, I, I was shaking my head. I'm like, who is this guy? Yeah, we all were. And, you know, he, he turned out to be decent. I'm not going to say great. He turned out to be decent. And he is frail. He is frail. He's so, for somebody his size, he's not. I don't think he has. Very the, skinny. Yep. I don't think he has the strength. I don't think he has the mental toughness. And, yes, you can definitely he, question that, too. And the one thing in sports, as you could see, is mental toughness is very big, especially when, you, when you're when you not playing on a good team. It takes a lot of mental toughness to go out there yeah. every week and try to get it done. And that's what the and Knicks he are does not, have to and get that, through. And that's not... He does not have it. Nope. He couldn't even sit He's, through it when he wasn't playing. He... The one thing I, from what I saw is that he's a very, very arrogant individual. He cared more about Kristoff than the Knicks. It seems to the be. The one yeah. K... He cared about the K in his name, not the K in the Knicks name. And, yeah, and right. Good one, good one. So, I'm... I'm going to say this, let's, this trade, it, it's going to sting for a little bit. Oh, but, yeah, but, it definitely hurts. But you know what? You guys are in a step in the right direction. Yeah, so, Christophs, I'm going to break it down by the numbers quickly, then we'll pass this trade off because we have other ones to get to, obviously. But Christophs was averaging 22 points, 7.6 rebounds, and 2.4 blocks before he went down last year. Yeah. So he was playing great ball. Again, I told you he started the season on fire, so the numbers dropped a bit. But all great numbers. He was looking good. Only his third year, like we said. But he went down the ACL. You'll know if he's going to be the same. Courtney Lee was a throw-in. He was just to help us clear that cap space. Thank God we got rid of him. He was useless for $12 million, Really did nothing. But he averaged like 10 points a game through yeah. his whole career. Like We had to expect this. That move was a little puzzling, too, yeah. honestly. But... So we get rid of the salary. Like, is the main objective was this was to clear that cap and then get Porzingis out, and we did both in two stones, and we got future first and a you young. You killed two birds with one stone. Actually, three because we were also looking for future picks and an impact young player, and we got all that stuff. Dennis Smith. Now he is averaging thirteen point one points, four point four assists. And three rebounds in the second year with Dallas. I think he can fit better with the Knicks team too with Dallas because Luka Doncic was taking up a lot of the ball handling. And he was a better point guard than Dennis Smith, even though he's not really a point guard, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, he had the ball in his hands. He was a distributor. Smith was becoming, like, a non-factor. It, it made sense for both parties to move on. And Dennis Smith seems happy to be with the Knicks. He's fully embraced it, and I'm really happy to have him. So I hope he could be that point guard we're looking for, even if we don't get Irving. But I, obviously, I still want Irving. That's not to say Dennis Smith blocks Irving, but Smith can be a great player for us. I hope his better basketball is ahead of him. Yeah. And then with the Wesley Matthews was averaging, looks like 13 points, 2.6 assists, 3.5 rebounds, 34% from three for West. Oh, no, West was not 34. That was Hardaway. But, yeah, West was averaging around 13. And um, he, oh, no, his stuff's actually somewhere else. Yeah, around, around 13. 2.3 assists, 2.3 rebounds. So he got spot out. He's not even going to be part of our plans. I figured he was not going to stay with the Knicks, really. It didn't make any sense, really. So he's on the Pacers, and that's good for them because Oladipo went down, so hopefully he could pick up some of that slack for them. And then DeAndre Jordan is an interesting one here. He, like Bobby said, he's not the same player he used to be, but he is still a productive player. Averages 11 points, 13.6 boards, around one block a game. His blocks have gone down. I think his scoring has gone down in recent years, but he can really be an asset for the Knicks, I feel like. He can also help Mitch Robinson grow. I feel like Mitch should try to do some things DeAndre did. That would be a great teacher to have. That defensive and rebounding presence that DeAndre is, used to be, still is, you know, a little bit diminished, but the fundamentals he still has, obviously. Mm. So I think Mitch is in a great spot with DeAndre. And also another tidbit with DeAndre, I don't know if you caught this one, but it could also be 
a Kevin Durant play because him and Kevin Durant are very close. Really? Yes. They are close. Kevin Durant, I learned this this week that Durant tried to recruit DeAndre to go to Texas, actually, but DeAndre chose Texas A&M. Really? Also, wow, they played know. together on Team USA in 2016 and seemed to enjoy their time together. So maybe he could help us. Hey, whatever helps, I'm all for it, yeah. honestly. But the only thing with that is that I'm not sure how this cap situation will work and how they would afford everyone. Someone would have to take a pay cut, but that's like way in the future. We don't got to worry about that right now. DeAndre's not being bought out. The whole finish of season with the Knicks. Cantor's gone. We already said that. Yeah. Look for the Celtics to pick him up. They've been very interested in him. And, okay, so that's that with that trade. So another big trade... Which one do you think is bigger? I'm going to ask you. Okay. So the Philly, the 76ers picked up Tobias Harris from the Clippers. This was a big trade in my opinion. He's now forming a big four with Ben Simmons, Jimmy Butler, and Joel Embiid. One of the best starting fives in the NBA now. I'll go out on the limb and say that with your boy J.J. Redick in there as well. I really, I really like that trade. And then the Raptors picked up Marcus Saul. Which one do you feel will have more impact and shift the power in the East? Because there's been... And also, I'll add one more move. The Bucks got Nikolai Mirotic as well. So the, all the teams except Boston made a big move to try to get themselves ready for the playoffs. Which one do you think was the highest impact? Well, <clears throat> I think the one getting Marc Gasol to Toronto, I think that adds a big guy to go along with Kawhi Leonard and, and the boys up in... Uh, in Canada, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a big trade, honestly, but Tobias Harris, in my opinion, I think is younger, and, yeah. and that core in Philly is just getting stronger and stronger, yeah. so I'm going to say the Philadelphia 76ers trade is much bigger. Um, the one thing they did is to get Tobias Harris, they did let up a lot, uh, Landry Chimet, yeah, Wilson Chandler, Mike Muscala, they let up uh, the two first round picks in 2020 and 2021, and tw- uh, second round pick in 2020. Yeah, this was huge. So they let up a lot of stuff, but you know what? This is a core, and they're gonna, and they have a lot of young assets. Oh yeah, that are just gonna uh, fix in and work all together. So you know, I think that this was you know the 76ers knew what they wanted. They went out and got it, and they still have yeah. They still got the process in beat. They still got Simmons. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they got a Butler. They got a great core. So mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're going to be fine. Yeah, I, I love this move for the Sixers. I also like it for the Clippers, too, because they got to clear that cap space because Tobias Harris was probably not going to resign. And they got a lot of assets for a rental player, in theory. Although the Sixers, I'll add this note. Two things to add to this trade before we move on with it. Tobias is averaging 21-8. Great numbers. Um, he won't see the, that same production in Philly, but he's yeah. not going to have to because they have enough guys to take care of that. And the Clippers, I, he was the best player in the Clippers. I agree. That was one of the issues for the Clippers. He's not supposed to be your best player. Tobias is a good player, but he's better suited to be your three or four, uh, your third or fourth option. And that's exactly what it'll be in Philadelphia. But the one big thing in this trade, that pick, that 2021 first rounder, that's Miami's pick. That could be huge. Yeah. Because the Heat are not in a good spot right now. That could very well be a lottery pick. I don't know what their future's looking like. That's the big asset in that trade that the Clippers got back. Because Landry Shaman's an alright player. He's averaging 8.3, shoots 40% from three, so he'll help their shooting a little bit. He's a rookie, so he'll he'll grow. He'll get a little bit better. Uh, he's a nice piece for the Clippers. Uh, Wilson Chandler is nothing at this point. He's yeah. very injury prone. He's older. He was only averaging like seven points a game. He was just trying to make the money work. And um, Mike Muscala is a similar situation. Only 7.4 points, 4.3 boards. Although he does have more than one block a game. So he can fill in for them, add them some depth. But this was a great move for both sides in my opinion. Clippers got what they wanted. Philly got what they wanted. I thought it was one of the best trades of the deadline, honestly, yeah. overall, like for both sides. I agree. So let's get to Marcus Gasol. That's a huge trade, too. Um, so the Raptors get Gasol. His numbers are a little bit down. 15.7, 8.6 rebounds, 
4.7 assists and 1.2 blocks. And those are nice numbers, especially since I'm saying they're down. But he used to have higher ones, and now he's 34. He's a little bit older, but he gives that veteran presence. He knows how to get buckets in the postseason, which is an issue they've had. He'll be able to help them down low, get some rebounds, get that clutch scoring when they need it. He's battle-tested. He's a veteran. This makes all the sense in the world for Toronto. Valanciunas was only averaging 12.8, 7.2 boards. He was never becoming what they hoped he would be. He was always a decent player, but never, like, that good, really. Like, he never took that next step, unfortunately. So they sent him packing. They sent DeLon Wright packing. Averages, like, 70 games. CJ Miles, like, 5.5. These are spare parts. Yeah. And they got a perennial, a former all-star, I'll say. He's not an all-star anymore, but he's still a very good player. And I think that the Raptors and Sixers may very well be the best two teams in the East right now, in my opinion. But, so you, I know you like that trade too. The next one we'll go over is the Bucks and the Pelicans say to the trade, because I'm just trying to go through the East power structure a little bit. Um, so Miritich gets shipped to the Bucks for Stanley Johnson and Jason Smith. A complete um, dump off for the Bucks. Two second rounders. Again, all spare parts that they don't need at all. Stanley Johnson actually acquired for Thom Maker earlier in the week. A couple guys got traded multiple times this week. But Miritich is a great get for the Bucks. He's a very underrated player, in my opinion. He had a lot of issues in Chicago, but he was still balling out with them. Had the fight with Bobby Portis, who also got traded. We'll get to him later. But, yeah, so many people got traded. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> but, um... Miritic averages 16.7, 8.3 rebounds. Just adds another score to help Giannis out. He's a great three shooter. Help. They needed a little more shooting since Giannis doesn't really shoot, you know. Yeah. So they have Middleton to shoot. Eric Bledsoe's been playing well. So they have a big four too now. The Bucks and Sixers both made big fours, and the Raptors have one too. Honestly, Leonard. They got Gasol. They got Danny Green and Lowry. So that's a nice combination as well. Um, okay, so, Bucks, Raptors, Sixers all make big moves. Celtics are left with the buyout market. And I'm going to actually get to the buyout market quickly before we go through some more trades. The buyout market is now what teams use that left of the trade deadline. They use this to get spare assets that they can use to help the playoff run. The Sixers picked up very two key parts of their team last year in the buyouts. Iran Ali, Ali Silva. I think I said that name wrong, but whatever. And Marco Bellinelli are both huge three-point shooters. The buyout market. I'm going to go through it. Tell me if you think any of these guys can help any teams. Yeah. So, Robin Lopez might be bought out with the Bulls, but now they're saying they might keep him, but that's up in the air. Carmelo Anthony has already been waived, and I'm pretty sure the Lakers are eyeing him. They made a trade that opened up space for him. Um, they sent Zubek and Michael Beasley to the Clippers for Muscala. I thought this was a head-scratcher because I think Zubek is actually a very good player. Yeah. He only averages 8.5 and 5 boards, but Muscala averages 7.4 and 4.3. And I'm pretty sure he's older than Zubek, too. I'd have to double-check. But regardless, Zubek was money inside. There was one time, i got to tell you this funny story. Okay. You're going to like this one. So I bet... Timberwolves against the Lakers one night. Mm -hmm. And guess what Zubek did that night? He was basically perfect. He was like something crazy. Huh. Like 12 for 12, like 24 points. And ever since that day, I was like, God damn, this guy's good. I was like, this guy's on my radar. And he <laughs> screwed he screw me that night. Because he literally made every shot and I lost. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. You, this guy went off. Like it was, it was the game of his life, of course. That's the stuff that happens when you bet. <laughs> but anyway, I got sidetracked for a little bit. So I think Melo's going to the Lakers, honestly. I think that's why this move was made because they whiffed on Anthony Davis. So that's a whole saga we have to get to. How have I not got to that yet? Wow. So buyout market. Jeremy Lin, like you talked about before, he might be a buyout candidate. Yeah, he Wayne, uh, Wayne Ellington, who got traded from the Heat to the Suns, a nice three-point shooter, like 37%. He might be on the buyout. In that trade, Tyler Johnson also went to Phoenix for Ryan Anderson. This was a head-scratcher to me. This, I guess the Heat were trying to clear money here, but Anderson is nothing now. He's just like, he gets traded all over the place. He's just like a money guy, like, to make the money work. He started, he was with the Rockets. Now he's with the Suns. Mm -hmm. Now he's with the Heat. Averages three points a game right now, like three rebounds. The guy's shot. <laughs> but he, the Heat, I guess, wants to clear money. 
Tyler Johnson was only averaging like 11 points a game, two and a half assists. He never became what they thought he would be. And the Suns are also still looking for a point guard, so I guess they figured they'd take a flyer. Yeah. Why not? I mean, it makes sense for them. So, J.R. Smith could be in the bio market. You think he has any good basketball left in him? No. I think he's <laughs> gone. I, I, I don't know why any team would even give the guy a look after what uh, after the nonsense he did in the finals. Oh, with that whole free throw debacle? Yep. Oh, man, that was a tough one. Oh, J.R. I liked him with the Knicks, but, yeah, maybe his time's up. I mean, the Cavs don't want to play him anymore. They're yeah. tanking. He's I don't know what's going on with that. I think he could maybe help a team that needs a shooter, but... That's about it, honestly. That's all he is at this point. Um, let's see. And his cancer we already talked about. He's going to the Celtics, potentially. Morsin Gartat. Then Frank the Tank Kaminsky might get bought out by the Hornets. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, that's... Um, you think he can help someone with another team, maybe? Yeah, he might. You know, maybe gives him a look late in the season. Maybe a contender, maybe. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and then uh, you're up to, um, to the... Wow, I do not know how to say his name. To Dosik, I'll say, from the Clippers, a point guard they had signed internationally. Things haven't been going great with him. He's a candidate to be bought out as well. Yeah. I don't know what he can do for anyone, really. He might go back overseas. I mean, yeah. And then there was another buyout, actually. The trade... Okay. I know I'm going on tangents, but did you see what happened with Harrison Barnes? Did you catch that? Yeah, he was on the he was playing a game and he was on the bench and he was like, he was, "Oh yeah, by the way, you got traded." I've never seen that before like that. Really, I've seen it in baseball, but I've never seen it in basketball where the guy's playing and he scored ten straight points for them, and then he sits to the bench. He's wondering why he gets pulled. They're like, "Oh yeah, you got traded." <laughs> <laughs> and the guy was balling too. So, like, I don't know how many he had for the game, but he was going off. <laughs> so this trade, I actually like this on both sides as well. Because the Kings needed a scorer. They didn't really they needed someone to get buckets. They were lacking that a little bit. And then they give up Justin Jackson, who's a young player who maybe the Mavericks think they could turn into a nice bench piece, only averaging like seven a game with three boards. And then they swap Zach Randolph just to make the money work. He's another yeah. buy there's the other buyout candidate. He hasn't played all year. He's thirty seven years old. I don't know what's up with that. I'm not sure what he has left or if he could even help anyone at this point, but Maybe a contender will put him on the bench. Who knows? Yeah. So. We'll see. All right. So let's get to this stuff. We'll go back to over to some of these trades later, but we got to get some more relevant stuff than some of the trades. I feel like. So Anthony Davis, LeBron, the Lakers. What a fail that yep. has turned into. That is look. And now you got Lavar Ball running his mouth again. This is becoming a circus in L.A. This is what everyone was afraid would happen, and this is exactly what has happened. What do you make of all the stuff going on in L.A.? Not to mention the fact that there's a picture of LeBron that has about four seats between him and everyone else on the bench. This was the night, of course, where everything got leaked. The huge offer was going to be Ingram, Ball, Hart, Kuzma, I think maybe Rondo or Beasley or Lance Stevenson. I'm not sure which one <laughs> at this point. It's so confusing. And then they gave, and there was going to be, I think, maybe two first rounders as well. And the Pelicans said no to all of that. Well, I'm like, what more can you want? I don't understand. Well, <laughs> they literally were going to give the whole team except LeBron James. It was, it was, <laughs> I think that's probably what have gotten it done, dude. You watch. Um, look, look. This is crazy. Anthony Davis, you know, he wants out. You That's know, very he, clear. He wanted to go to the Lakers. The Lakers, and they also said he really liked the Knicks too. Ooh, which, Knicks! So I like that. Um, I feel like the whole thing was an epic fail on mm. the, the Lakers' part. You know, you know what? I'm gonna say this. You know what? The Lakers did everything they could. They they gave a huge haul. They gave. They literally gave them. <laughs> they had a whole team almost. <laughs> yes, basically gave them the entire team except LeBron, <laughs> and the Pelicans were dumb enough and said no because the Pelicans next year you're not going to get that this offer year. again. In my opinion, There's is he only... a free agent? <clears throat> no, they have one more season. So instead of one and a half seasons <laughs> of Anthony Davis, you now have one season of Anthony Davis. Yeah. So the value should go down automatically just based off so that. They could have gotten so many young ta young players and talent and future draft picks and they just pass it up because because of why because you want to keep I understand you want to keep one of the best players in the NBA but you know what 
If he's not happy, if he's not going to work hard for you, why not? This is like, it, to me, this is similar to an Antonio Brown thing in the NFL with the Steelers. Hmm, interesting. In it's opinion. also similar to the Porzingis situation, but yeah. surprisingly, we handle it better, which you know, which rarely ever happens yeah, with you us. Guys, you, <laughs> you guys took care of business. So. <laughs> but, yes, the other thing I'll add to this, they lost by 42 points to the Pacers without Victor Oladipo. Oh. That should bring red flags, like, everywhere. That is a serious issue. Yep. And that just shows their head wasn't in the game. Mm -hmm. There was one play I saw. LeBron James was, like, trying to pass the ball to someone, and it was, like, completely in the wrong direction. The other the guy was, like, nowhere near where he was going. Like, there was just disconnect through the whole team. Right now, they're actually looking better. I have a nice aim in the in podcast update here Lakers are currently up 86 to 82 in Boston around 420 left in the third quarter so maybe they'll come out of it tonight yeah so we'll see what ends up happening with that but the whole LeBron James thing the NBA the the Paul the agent with Anthony Davis um it's it's a saga and I don't think the NBA wanted this to go down really it would have made it look like that LeBron had too much control now, another interesting theory that Brian Windhorst actually floated. Did you hear this theory? I want to know if you did. What's it? They said the Pelicans did this on purpose. They never had any intention of trading him to the Lakers. Uh, and they wanted to leak this report to sabotage the Lakers. I think that's kind of, um, you know, messed up. I think it and, might be somewhat true, though. And I, I would be surprised that it is, man. It, it's just... But, listen, I think it's just all messed up. You know, like I said, I think that the Pelicans are going to really... Uh, regret not yes, doing that. extremely regret this. And, you know what? They only have themselves to blame for this, so more power to them, man. Yeah, so there's only one thing. There's two things, two reasons why they wouldn't do this trade now. They think they can get a better hole in the summer, which is very questionable, but... There's two ways this could happen, and I'm pretty sure you could see both of these. One of them is the Celtics trading Jason Tatum, a couple other nice players, and some picks. That would probably trump any offer the Lakers had because I'm sure you agree with me that Tatum's way better than any of the guys the Lakers have Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. I know you'll definitely agree with that. Yep. And then the other one is my Knicks. If we get the first pick, we can give them Zion. Possibly Kevin Knox, maybe even Dennis Smith, some picks Dallas gave us, and that becomes an interesting package, yeah. too. So I guess they're trying to hope that one of those things break their way, and they, I, get, I think they wanted a high-impact player. I guess they felt none of those guys were franchise players, that you couldn't sell your fans on turning over the franchise to those guys. If you get Zion, you could sell, okay, we have Zion. If you get Jason Tatum, you'd be like, okay, we got Jason Tatum. Like, yeah. You know, they're more profitable than the guys the Lakers are going to send. Oh, yeah. So I guess that's their thinking. And for their sake, you're going to have to hope that works out for them. Yeah. And a lot of low-key teams I would consider in this race to get Davis. He put the Clippers on his list. I'm not sure if you saw that. And they have a bunch of picks now. I don't really know what players they have of worth, so I'm not sure if that would actually happen, but... And then the Bucks. That's an interesting one. I would keep an eye on the Bucks. Imagine playing Giannis and Anthony Davis together. Holy oh. man, that would be some tandem. That would probably go to the finals, to be honest. Yeah, that's scary to even think about. That's, that'd be yeah, some. Yeah, that'd crazy. be some combo. I can see why he'd be interested in going there. Yeah, I agree. And the Bucks do have some assets. I'm not sure what their pick situation is, but they have some decent guys behind Giannis, like Chris Middleton, maybe Eric Bledsoe. Though he's a little yeah. older now. Obviously not mere attention, they just sent him there, but, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Davis, and that's the summer conversation. And speaking of summer conversations, Kevin Durant, we got to get to KG here. So, everything's been going crazy since the Knicks traded Porzingis. I've seen about a million alerts to my phone that the Knicks are getting KG. I'm not even making this up. Like, I've probably gotten, like, ten... Plus the words since yeah. Porzingis got traded that people have inside information that KD's coming to the Knicks. And since all this has happened, he chose not to speak to the media oh, since yeah. all this went down. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, he says he doesn't trust them. And then yesterday he finally breaks that silence and it was very colorful. Yeah. He really went off. I've never heard KD in that light before really. It's, yeah. What do you think about all this stuff and how, how he responds and how he handled the media? Like how could I think this could have been handled way better. I think the Warriors dropped the ball with this. They should have just said he's not taking questions about that. But they let this linger. He let it linger. 
What do you think, brother? I think he's frustrated in a way. Yeah, he definitely and, is. He's and a- you know what? He said he doesn't trust people in the media. And listen, people in the media, and we could agree that they are there to do a job. Yeah. They're there to get a story, to get a big story, and that's how they get paid. That's how right. they put food on the table for yeah. their families. We kind of do it too a little bit. Yeah. And there's ways that they ruin people's like families and stuff, players' families. Yeah, well, I hope this. we don't do that. But. No, we're, well, no, I'm not doing it. But look, but look, Kevin Durant is, you know, he's not a very vocal, <coughs> excuse me, vocal guy. Keeps to himself. He lets his play talk. Yeah. And you know what? That we're seeing a different side. Listen, he's a two-time champion now. Yeah. You know, I think that it's pretty obvious. The writing's on the wall that he will not be back with Golden State next oh, year. Oh, so now you actually do think he's leaving? Yeah, I do. I, I, uh, I think that you know what? I think he likes the Knicks, and you know, he, him, and what you you kind of convinced me with the DeAndre Jordan thing you told me about <laughs> earlier. But you know what? The way that I do agree, the Warriors should have just said, you know, we don't want. He's not taking any questions about yeah. that, so everybody brought it on themselves, and he acted the way he acted. And you know what? There's no, there's not going to be ramifications. I think that you know, they the, the media asked for it. They they wanted a reaction, and they finally got one. Yeah, <laughs> he fed, he kind of fed into the mon- the media monster in a way. Yeah, he definitely so, did. No question about that. So you know what? He's. I think he's just going to use this as a motivation. He's going to try to get another ring. Yeah, well, I think he's going to get that. Obviously, I think Warriors are going to take it. I mean, the East have made some nice moves, but none of it's going to be enough to take down the Warriors, yeah. I don't think. But here's the thing. He's definitely hearing the noise. There's no question he's hearing the noise. If you think otherwise, I don't know what you're watching or what exactly. you're living in. It's, exactly. get, it's clearly getting to him. He has soft skin. We've seen it before with the burner accounts and all that. He do, He's very... He cares too much about what people say. Like, he's very plugged in. Like, more plugged in than he should be, honestly. It's a detriment that someone that great has to care that much about what other people yeah. think, honestly. But, enough. But I still hope we get him, obviously. <laughs> that doesn't change my opinion on anything. I still believe we have a good chance to get him. I just hope everything goes well. The New York media will be tough, but I also think they'll be very embracing and they'll be very happy that we actually have a relevant basketball player for once. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. I just felt that was worth talking about. A couple more moves to go through, and then I'm going to actually go through the All-Star games, and then we'll probably wrap up basketball for now. So the Clippers sent Avery Bradley another move to clear a little bit of cap for Garrett Temple and Jamichael Green. These guys aren't really high-impact guys. Like Bradley's averaging 8.2, Temple 9.4, and Jermichael Green is probably the best player in the deal, actually. 10 points almost, around 6 boards. So he'll be an all-right piece for the Clippers, you know. And then um, a, a, a big trade. This was actually kind of under the radar, in my opinion. The Wizards have a situation going on with John Wall not being able to play for a year, basically. So they are kind of rebuilding things a little bit. Yeah. They sent Otto Porter to the Bulls, which was huge to get that money off their books. They got Parker, who's an expiring deal. Portis is like a rookie contract, so he doesn't make that much. Um, they also sent Markeith Morris to the Pelicans for Wesley Johnson. And I think they also sent a second with Morris for Wesley, or they got a second. A second was sent yeah. somewhere, but... Second rounders in the NBA, like, they don't mean much, really. You see those cents all the time. They're just, like, extra pieces to, I guess, inch, like, little gaps people may have with players or money or whatever. Because second rounders are very hard to hit on. We got a decent one with Mitch Robinson, I hope. But it doesn't happen too often. Although Isaiah Thomas was the last pick in the draft, and that was a steal, obviously. But So, the Bulls are... The Bulls got an interesting player in Porter. I actually... He's a very interesting player. Porter signs a huge deal. He signed a max with Washington, I think, four for 120 or something like that two years ago. He's in the second year of that, and he's really regressed with them, unfortunately. Only averaging 12.6 points, 5.6 boards, and two assists. But here's the concern. 
and I'm gonna ask why. I'm not sure exactly how this happened, but I want to see your opinion with this. Mm -hmm. He shot 44 percent from three last year. Great three point shooter. That's been the strength of his game, which is a lot of the reason why he got that paper he got. Honestly, but this year he's only shooting 36 percent. That's a huge drop off. What do you think is going on with Porter? I know we don't really watch Wizards that much, but do you think it was the stuff with John Wall? I mean, there was a lot of chaos in the locker room. The Wizards seem to be very dysfunctional, too. There always seems to be something going on. The Bradley Beal and John Wall situation has been very edgy. Apparently, those two don't always see eye to eye, I've heard. So, what do you think about what's going on in Washington? Just another clown show. <laughs> no, they don't know how to keep their bo their guys under control. I know they're, uh, <clears throat> you know, in my opinion, I feel that their star is John Wall. He, he's the center of attention. He's the he's yeah. the guy. And, you know, I guess some people on the team just don't like that. Yes, there's been disconnect with him and a lot of the players. So it's, it's a problem, and it's not going to get fixed unless somebody goes. It's, or, you know... John, they're going to have to sit John Wall down and see maybe try to take a leadership role, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. But uh, the Porter situation, uh, to be quite honest with you, it's just it just seems like a, just being selfish in a way. That's the way I see it. Hmm. Yeah, maybe he's just not, like, buying in fully. Yeah. Who knows? No, he's not. I he, think it's a good gamble for the Bulls, though, try to get a nice player that can up start, jumpstart them. I mean, they're not going anywhere. I think it's a decent risk. There's not like they're getting any free agents to walk through his doors. So, yeah. you, you got to try to get talent somehow. I mean, they might have another high draft pick, I guess. But, yeah, that's a mess in its own right. But Bradley Beal, I'm going to ask you. 25 a game, 5.1 assists and boards. He's really been breaking out this year. He's been probably his best season in the league. Do you think the Wizards should have tried to trade him and just completely restart it, or you think they should try to salvage him when Wall comes back? I think they should should salvage what they have, and, and if it doesn't work, maybe next year try to trim the fat in a way, if you know what I mean. Basically. Beal? Or, well, Wall's untradeable, no, I think, with no, that contract. No, so it would Beal. have to be Beal, yeah. It's Beal. He's very, he's very, um, he's a hot commodity. Get, a lot of people would go for Beal, no yeah, question. You, and you could get a nice haul for Bradley Beal. So. Yeah, you definitely could. He's a good player, I agree with that. Well, you, you know, I think you give it one more chance to try to make it work, and if it's not salvageable, you got to let him go. Yeah, we'll see next year, I guess. Another interesting one I'm going to ask you if they should have kept him or ditched him. They decide to keep him, and that's Mike Conley. The Grizzlies kind of did a half rebuild yeah. in a sense. They gave up Gasol, but not Conley. Conley's averaging over 20 a game, 6.5 assists, and 3.4 rebounds. Still playing at a high level. He's had some injury issues, but he seems to have gotten through those. Do you think that the Grizzlies should have blown it up, or do you think they should try? Well, they, they did. They did keep him. Do you think it was the right move to keep him, or do you think they should have gone tear down? Um, you know, I think that they made the right decision keeping him. Maybe see, you just keep him and see what else he's got. I guess. Yeah, I mean, he is the he is the franchise. He's been with them ever since he got drafted. Hey, he's listen, a big he part got of the, team. he got that big contract for a reason. Yeah, they did give him a lot of money. Yes, they did. And Jaron Jackson Jr. is a stud. That was a great pick by them. So he'll be a cornerstone that he can they can build around. So maybe you figure Jaron Jackson, Mike Connolly, maybe another decent draft pick. Maybe yeah. you get yourselves back on board because that's another place no free agent's gonna go play. Yeah. So <laughs> you not get anyone walking through those doors there. Exactly. I promise you that. <laughs> I'll tell you. You're absolutely right. So, I think, let's see, did I get to all these trades? I think I got to all the ones that's significant. I think there's some other minor ones that, that we can just leave them be. I feel like they're not really impactful too much. Yeah. We went through basically all the trades. Although, your Nets actually made a trade. Although They, they got Greg Monroe. Yes, yeah. for a second, and they got a second rounder. And they just gave up cash consideration. So, it was basically, in my opinion, it looked like just a dump off for it a is. big guy. It is. For, for a big guy. It's yes. a dump off. I think you guys might buy him out too, actually. There's another one. Yeah, a lot of buyouts. Buyout season is in full effect. There's no question about that. Yeah. So, now we got through all that. That was a huge sleep. Holy Holy, all right. So, um, we got the All Star teams. LeBron and Giannis picked the teams, and there was actually a trade that went down. This was really bizarre. I'll tell you that after we announced the teams. But so LeBron 
and there's a very interesting pattern with the players LeBron picked that I think you'll notice. Mm -hmm. Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, mm -hmm. James Harden, mm -hmm. but Kawhi Leonard, Anthony Davis, he did pick Russell Westbrook, but, but uh, traded him, yes. We'll get to that one. Um, Clay Thompson, mm -hmm. um, Damian Lillard, mm -hmm. LaMarcus Aldridge, Carl Anthony Towns, Bradley Beal, and then his boy, the GOAT, one of the GOATs, Dwayne Wade. Yeah. Not the GOAT, but one of them. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what did you notice with those players he picks? He basically picked the, the best players in the league. That's what he did. Well, yes, but there's something that some of them have in common. They're all going to be free agents soon. Oh. You see how I said KD, Kyrie, yeah, the, the, Aids, he Davis, Leonard, and Thompson. He, he, a marquee once. He picked all the free agents and basically seeing who he plays well with the best to try to get him in L.A. Very, very clever, LeBron. Very clever. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was an interesting I don't tidbit. like you, LeBron. So, John has picked his team, and then I'll tell you that team, and then we'll break down this weird trade that happened. Yeah. So, John has picked Curry. He picked the, the process and beat. He picked Paul George. He picked Kemba Walker, Chris Middleton, Nikolai Jokic, the Joker. Um, Russ, he picked but traded, like Bobby said. He picked Blake Griffin, D'Angelo Russell, your boy. Mm -hmm. Vucevic from the Magic. Um, Kyle Lowry and Dirk Nowitzki, the other OG. Oh, boy. So what happened was LeBron, I think, asked Giannis, or I think he at, he was really trying to stir the pot here. LeBron asked Giannis if he would take Russ for Ben Simmons because he said Simmons, no, he said Russ and Embiid don't like each other. He wanted to see them together. Mm -hmm. So now those two have to be in the same locker room. Those two don't have any love for each other. I'll tell you I that. I did not much. know that. Yeah, there's a little rivalry brewing between Westbrook and Joel Embiid. So it'll be very interesting to see how they interact. Oh, and apparently, God. there's also a rumor that LeBron doesn't like Russ that much, which is, I'm not sure if that one's true, but it would make some sense because he did just trade him. Apparently, he likes Ben Simmons, obviously, so they used to compare Simmons to LeBron, so I kind of see why he would like him, yeah. in a way. That's that's some weird stuff. I never thought I'd see a trade in the All-Star game. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it either. When I saw that, I was like, oh, what? Yeah. It's kind of strange. So we're actually going to close the show with a question. Okay. And we might look at the standings too, but we have a question from our good friend Matt. Let's see it. He asked, does he think that the NBA players make their choices based off living costs? Does he think that expect, does that he, does he think the living costs affect where players ultimately sign? I think it has like a minimal, in my opinion, a minimal factor. I think basically where where players sign <clears throat> is they first off the money talks where whoever offers yeah. the most money, and also if you're winning, I think that yeah, uh, it seems to be. I actually think there's some legs to what he's saying though, because I'll give you some examples of this. The big three in Miami, they all took pay cuts, but there's no state tax in Florida, so did they really take pay cuts? If you think about it, remember when that happened? Yeah. They, but they weren't getting taxed. Also, the situation with Paul George. He got more money with Oklahoma City, obviously, but L.A. is very expensive to live in. So did that maybe sway part of his decision to maybe stay in Oklahoma City? I don't know. I'm just speculating off that. And then the Knicks, is that part of the reason why we haven't gotten anyone? Because New York's expensive to live in? I don't know. But the thing is, with that expensive, yes, those areas are expensive to live in, but they also have opportunities in marketing and endorsement that other areas don't have that can almost make up for the cost of living, I feel yeah. like. So it's a very interesting topic, and I think it does have some effect on certain players, but not everywhere. Like, it's definitely, it's an interesting topic for sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting to talk about, you know, to see what people do and... Where they end up. Yeah, where this they end up. This summer is going to be crazy. That uh, that's putting it wild. mildly, man. That's putting <laughs> it mildly. Yeah, this is going to be the summer. 
of that free agency for the NBA. This yeah. is gonna be and I guarantee it will go fa- it will go faster than it than baseball. <laughs> oh my god, brother! If it doesn't, then I don't even know what I would do. Yeah. It's gonna be done within two weeks, though, because only baseball it actually moves in a prompt section. You know mm-hmm. why it is though? Because it's more structured, brother. Yeah. Basketball has a set number you can offer. And that's it. It doesn't change, and the deals are shorter. Yeah. That's the issue with baseball, which we'll get to in a little bit, actually, because that's our next pod. But I just want to break down the standings in a little bit before we go, just to see, just to get, keep the good people informed. So, the Eastern Conference. Okay, we talked about the East at length today. The Bucks are in first right now, one and a half games up in the Raptors in second. Indiana's in third, but... Victor Oladipo not playing. They're going to drop. They won't finish top four. Um, I think they can maybe be 5-6 at best. But Boston is in fourth. But they're, they've are they been playing better of late. So we'll yeah. see if they can keep it going. They're in a tight one with the Lakers right now. But they're 9-1 in their last 10 games. So maybe they're starting to figure it out. Maybe they didn't need any trade acquisitions. We'll see how they finish. Or <laughs> who are they get in the bio market maybe. Exactly. So, in fifth, you've got the process. Six and a half games. They're going to make a jump. They're definitely going to climb up a little bit. We'll see where they end up. Um, sixth place, your Nets. Brooklyn. Where's Brooklyn at? Yeah. <laughs> you guys are in sixth playing good ball. In seventh place, you got Charlotte. In eighth place, you have the Heat, who are always in that no man's land, yeah. like that low area yeah. where you don't want to be in. And right behind them, you have the Pistons, who live there religiously every year. I think the Pistons have been like in the seven to ten range for like five years. I don't even think I'm huh. joking. I, huh. I don't even think I'm joking about that either. That's how sad their situation has become. And then yeah, the rest of it you don't need to know. It's not great, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Western Conference you got the Warriors in first, obviously. Nuggets are in second. They've still been playing good ball. Only one and a half games behind them. The Thunder are in third place. And four games back, they've been playing well. Portland's been playing well in fourth. Houston Rockets right behind them in fifth. San Antonio in sixth. Utah seven. The Clippers eight. But here's the other thing I didn't mention with the Clippers and Boston. Boston took another big L because the Clippers pick. The Boston has the Clippers pick. Yeah. But it's lottery protected. And the Clippers are now the eighth seed and gave up their best player. So, I don't really think they're going to be a playoff team, which means that they're going to be in the lottery, which means that Boston ain't getting that pick. No. Because the Kings, I'm not saying they're a real threat, it's the Kings, but they're playing better than normal, I guess. They're only one game out of the spot. The threat is the Lakers. That's the team I'm expecting to get in there, obviously. You are too, even though you don't like LeBron. They're 500 right now. 27-27, 27-27, but they're only two games back. They have so much time to make that up. Then I think they'll get in there. They have to. LeBron doesn't miss the playoffs. No. No, he doesn't. He has yet to see. I have yet to see him do that. No, he actually did once, I found out. Chris Bosh was on the air the other day. In 2004, I want to say he missed it. Really? They said he just missed it. He was a nine seed. And the A team that had to win one or something. And Bosch and LeBron was devastating. He's never seen him like that before. This was like 15 years ago. Crazy, man. Jeez. That's probably the last time he missed the playoffs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't think that's going to happen this year. No. So, with basketball, that's probably all we got time for today. I'm Julian Glardy. I'm Bobby Thompson. And we'll see you soon. Baseball next. I knew that was going to be long. <laughs>